And then there's football. Football has been out of it somewhat, and we will plan on getting back to it here shortly. We're your home for Aztecs football next year, 1360 Fox Sports San Diego, new offensive coordinator for your Aztecs, Jeff Heklinski, joining us now on extra 1360. Jeff, first things first, how are you and your family doing? Great, Judson. Thank you for having us on, and thank you for asking. And I, I want to know how little Judson's doing. <laughs> well, thank you for asking. Uh, he's doing great. He he will be uh, two months on Monday, and uh, okay. he just met his grandfather for the first time last week, uh, who drove 30 hours here to meet him for health purposes. Uh, so yep, he got to meet his grandfather, his great, uh, great-grandmother. great uh, So Judd is doing great. Thanks for asking, Coach. I, I, I know you got a lot of kids uh, at home as well. I can also assume that this has been the most unique time of your career these last couple months. Would that be accurate? I, I think uh, I, I think that's an understatement. And <laughs> really, when you look at it, you know, nobody, I, nobody in our program has ever been or experienced anything like this before. And you know, there is no playbook, and and there is no, uh, you know, manual on on how to operate. And I think. You know, one of the things that, uh, you know, Coach Oak and, and his wife, Laura, have done a spectacular job of is is really keeping us uh, all on track, all in the loop, and all connected as a program together working through this. Jeff, we spoke about the pandemic uh, a month, maybe two months ago, uh, yes, about sir. how you are communicating with your group. And now I'd like to ask you about what you know what's unfolded since. It's a very diverse group. Your your football program, uh, offensively, what sort of conversations have you all been having? Well, I I think you know going back to where we were about two months ago when we first talked, you know, uh, Coach Hoke's direction and everything that he laid out, you know, was really a a a three prong a three prong direction that didn't change you know although our our setup changed and how things were taking place changed the expectations of the program did not change you know we're always built on academics and academic success first and and, you know speaking just from an offensive side you know we had a cumulative 3.0 gpa this semester offensively which was one of the highest uh in the program and obviously he made mention yesterday that our program has had one of the highest GPAs overall together this semester. So, you know, I thought from that standpoint, our players did an excellent job of, of, you know, living up to those expectations. You know, the second set of expectations is obviously representing your name and representing in who, who you are and your commitment to each one of our teammates and being a great teammate. And, and the one thing I can tell you is, you know, from seeing our players on Zoom and being with them every week, you know, just when you're we're just when you're looking at them, you can tell they're in good shape. You can tell they're hungry, and you can tell they're committed to being a great teammate to one another. And then the third the third part of it was you know advancing as a football player. We can't necessarily be in the greatest physical shape that we would be in through this time right now if we were in our normal circumstances. But what we can do is mentally, you know, advance ourselves from a football standpoint. And, and the one thing I can tell you offensively is we are ready to go. And, you know, we're, we're, we're chomping at the bit, you know, we're, we're like the horses at the Kentucky Derby right in the gates. And we're waiting, we're waiting for them to open that gate and, and hit the ground running. Aztecs um, offense coordinator, Jeff Eklinski with us on extra 1360. Jeff, what will look different this year? Well, I think, I, I think as a whole, you know, the expectations of the program are always going to be to, to be the most physical team on the, on, on the field. And, and, and obviously uh, we're going to run the football. I think the difference is going to be in in how we utilize our playmakers, putting them in positions to be able to both in the run and the pass to be able to get in space, get in one on one, and bring their personalities to the game and score touchdowns. And, and you know we're we're, we're a personnel based offense, and we're going to move fast. We're going to play with a ton of energy, and we're going to bring that physical mentality now with with an energy now. To, to be explosive. And, and the expectation is every player on that field that can touch the ball at any time has to be one of the most explosive players on that field and be able to score from anywhere. And our quarterbacks have to be able to, to direct it. And, and I think, you know, what our quarterbacks are going to be asked to do both in the pass and the run game it, it is going to create excitement, not only within our program, but within the community in the, in the San Diego State Aztec uh, Warrior Nation. How difficult is working through position competition? Uh, 
with your guys not being together? Uh, you, you know what? I, I think I think it's a preparation to get to the competition now. And I think that's 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 kind of the thing that's changed. You know, it's going to be up to each one of them and, and myself, you know, especially in the quarterback room, because, you know, the 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 number one position that we have to develop right now is a quarterback. And, and you know, we, we lost our starting quarterback. We won a lot of games uh, over the last three, four years. And, and the excitement now is watching these young men grow and we got to prepare them to grow. And I think that's the most important thing now is, is getting them prepared. So when we do get back out on the field and everything does come back to the competition part of what happens between those white lines, they're ready to go and put their best foot forward. And then it's up to them. And, and we talked about that, you know, the, the, the part of being a great teammate, it has to start in your quarterback room because only one's going to play. And, and that competition now has to, has to fall back on, okay, if that's not me, I got to be a great teammate and support who it is because I'm really only one play away if I'm the second string quarterback and I'm only two plays away if I'm the third string quarterback. And, and the reality of our game is we're going to need everybody. And, and so being a great teammate always falls back on starting in your quarterback room and the support of every one of those guys supporting each other. With a new offensive coordinator, you, and uh, losing the starting quarterback from last year, so someone will be getting a, a, a new start this year, would you actually say you're heading into the season either behind the eight ball or even at a disadvantage to teams who are returning their quarterbacks? I, I don't think so. You know, we, we, we were able to add Lucas Johnson to, to the quarterback competition mix, which I think is going to be a great addition to our program. And, and I think now the competition is, is just starting to heat up. So, no, I don't think we're behind at all. In fact, if anything, I would say we're ahead because we've been able to spend more time on football and teaching and quarterback fundamentals and, and, and going through film than we would have before. Because if you look at it from the time spring ball ended till right now, we would have been gone and recruiting and been in our camp season and we would have spent absolutely no time on football. So I think if anything, we're, we're, we're trending in the right direction and working ahead of the game. And now it's going to be coming back together, developing that timing and, and, and really that, uh, and synchronizing the entire offense together and, and, and allowing them to go to work. And again, you know, allow each one to bring their personality, bring their skill set and, and, and allow them to put their best foot forward in this competition. Jeff, it is, uh, June 12th today. And, uh, if 2020 has taught us anything, I don't know what June 13th is going to have in store for us. So it's tough right. to look ahead to September. But have you have you bothered to have any of the conversations about what it could be like playing in empty stadiums and, and again, maybe even being on the road where you're used to having a raucous crowd in a certain place where it may not be there? Or have you not even bothered because we just don't know what September may be like? You know what? I, I, I think I, I think we can, uh, we can take a look at it at this really as, as, as a big picture. And, you know, as an assistant coach, the one thing that we do is, is really take our lead from our leadership throughout the university. And it keeps you from having to have those competitions or, or conversations because we're not really sure what it's going to bring. And, and you look at president De La Torre and, and her pros, positive presence within the university community and the San Diego community as a whole. And you look at her message of support and compassion and commitment, not only to moving forward San Diego State athletics and, and specifically football, but in the social changes that are needed today. And then you look at our athletic director, J.D. Wicker, and his consistent message to unite all of the staff and coaches through this time in support of all of our student athletes and their voices and to listen to them and to empower them. And then you look at, you know, Brady Hoke and his wife, Laura, and the humble leaders that they are and how they empower and listen to our players. You know, you go back to, uh, you know, it was two weeks ago today that, that we had a team meeting with Miles McPherson. And, and, you know, how impactful that is, not only to me as a coach and a father and a husband, but to our players. And, you know, the message of change, advance, and commit, and empowering our players and their voices to, to really become leaders off the field as well as on the field. And, you know, when, when that happens and you look at that strong leadership from our president to our athletic director to our head coach, you know, it keeps our focus on, on our daily tasks at hand. 
And, and I think that's our message to all the players, and that's been that consistent message from President De La Torre to J.D. Wicker to, to Brady Hoke, is worry about what we're doing right now and how we can support our young men and women and our young student-athletes to create the changes that are necessary and then also stay focused on the task to get them to be the leaders that we know they're going to be moving forward. Jeff, thanks so much for taking the time. Do we have a date where you know you're going to be out on the field with your guys, and even if it's a very small group, even social distancing? Do we have a date that we can kind of – Look, uh, look out for where you guys will be together in some fashion. You know, I, I think, I, I think, I know that you know JD and, and Bobby Smither and, and and all of our administration with Brady Hoke are, are working very hard on on you know really getting all that solidified and and you know President De La Torre with, with the Chancellor, um, you know, getting all that approved to when we can come back. Um, you know that. To me, I'll defer to them because, you know, as an assistant, you know, my job right now is to worry about the quarterbacks and, and, and the offense and, and making sure our players have everything that they need uh, in order to be successful. Uh, we hope it's soon. I, I know things are, are, are trending in that right direction. But again, you know, like you said, it's the 12th. And, and hmm. at some point, you know, you don't know what the next day is going to bring. But, you know, we're prepared to handle it because of the leadership. Uh, within the university and the leadership of Brady Hoke and his wife, Laura. Well, they say that uh, communication is the key to success. You have probably communicated more with your players <laughs> and them with you uh, than ever before. Well, the, one, the one thing I can tell you is this. Football requires a ton of immense communication, and sometimes that communication can become very intense, uh, as as I'm sure you know, You know, being a big-time baseball player. <laughs> and, 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 you know, the one thing I can tell you is, uh, you know, from all of our leaders is, is the strong communication that we've had uh, and the unified message of support and support of all of our young men and women within the university and within the athletic department. And, uh, you know, I, I can tell you, we're excited and we're excited because we know that we are ahead and we know that it's just a matter of time. And when that time hits, it's going to be something special, and we can't wait. We can't wait to be the example of of what a team, when it comes together, how special that really can be, and and how much it can energize a university community and the entire community of San Diego. Jeff, we cannot wait either. All the best. Thanks for your time today. Thank you. Keep taking care of that little one. Enjoy that time. We will. Once they start, hey, once they start walking and running. Man, you, you, it'll never be the same. I know. We'll see how this old back does chasing him around. Thanks, Jeff. Well, hey, I know I know that was a special moment with with uh, you know his grandfather and his great grandmother. So you know, uh, enjoy that, and we're glad that that could happen. We'll never forget it. Thank you, Jeff. Yes, sir. You have a good weekend.